Hey everybody, the point of this little video is to hopefully give you some empirical evidence as to why the percentages we talked about in class, uh, that's 68 or roughly two-thirds of normally distributed data is within one standard deviation, uh, just about 95 within two, and just about, well, just about all, not quite all within three. I want to kind of give you some, some evidence as to why that's true. So what I've done in Excel here is uh, created a spreadsheet that randomly generates uh, normally distributed data. So here's a function if you're interested in functions. Uh, square root, negative two times natural log, blah, 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 blah. What you're looking at there, if, you're, if you care, is basically you're looking at the, uh, the function that generates normal data based on what's called the PDF, which is the probability density function. You can ignore all that for right now and later on in class we'll show you why that equation actually results in randomly distributed data, um, randomly normally distributed data. Uh, but right now all you have to understand is whenever I press the F9 button it's going to generate more and more of these data points and hopefully you can see like for example this one's negative 0.45 that lands between negative 0.5 and negative 0.4. If I hit it again I get negative 0.93 that lands between negative 1 and negative 0.9. Uh, 0.18, that's going to land between 0.1 and 0.2. So every time I press F9, every time I press F9, it's going to drop another point into this histogram, and the histogram is going to automatically update with that new normally distributed data. So <coughs> it's going to keep track for me. <coughs> right now it looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There's 8 data points up there. This looks like it's telling me 7 eighths of them, or 87.5%, are within one standard deviation. And it's counting a little weird right now because I'm seeing that 6 eighths of them, which would be 75%, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, oh no, excuse me, this is 9. That's why. It's still counting a little weird. Um, don't worry about that. Excel tends to count a little strangely on the bottom end of these random calculations. And that would make a big deal in the beginning if we only wanted 9 or 10 data points. But I'm going to let this thing run out uh, for a good long time, um, a, a few minutes actually. Uh, so I'm going to hold down the F9 button like this, and as it does that, you're going to see the bell curve kind of grow from the cumulative uh, addition of the data points. It's also going to get kind of boring to, uh, to watch that happen, so I figure while we do this, why don't we listen to the sweet tap, the sweet tap. <laughs> Not quite, not quite rounding out. It should have an average of right about here. 
that's why I want you to check out this awesome harmonized guitar solo and, it, and just amaze and amazement. Notice how the randomness takes care of itself. So, friends, what you've just seen is the random generation of, I don't know how many thousands of data points. I mean, I don't know. This bar is about 170 tall, and we've got a bunch of those. So, let's say it's 3,000 data points or something like that. And you get this beautiful bell curve based off of pure randomness. Pure, rolling, rolling, rolling randomly generated normal dice. And we'll talk more about that, too, as the course goes on. But here's what I wanted you to pay attention to right there. 67.3% fell within one standard deviation. That is darn close to 68%. 95.7%, which is darn close to 95.44, which I believe is the correct to two decimal places. 99.7, and 99.7 .7 is what it is. If I was to run this simulator a few more times or hold down the F9 button like I'll do in class from time to time, they'll get even closer to their true values. But the idea is, is that's close enough. We can see what they're supposed to be. So, I hope this sheds some light on you, and uh, congratulations. It's, for most of you, it's probably your first Monte Carlo simulation. We'll talk more about that in class two. So, hope it helped.